Hey everybody, it's Tony from Hard for Games here, and a number of months back, me his prototype Ultra 64 controller, and it truly was a dream come true to put my hands on it. Like many of you, as a child, I idolized the Ultra 64 name and the design. I just thought it was so sleek and just like powerful sounding. And I very much lamented when Nintendo had to change the name and also when they changed the design to be more colorful. That said, I still really enjoyed playing around with the controller. And in my previous videos, I covered many of the differences, which are often somewhat small and superficial. However, the biggest difference was the joystick and thumb pad. It was much longer and much wider. And that sounds fine on paper, but in actual practice, especially with like 3D platformers, aka Mario 64, there's just was too much movement side to side and the stick itself was just far too slippery to play comfortably. So unfortunately, I had to admit to myself, yeah, okay, it makes sense why they ultimately went with a smaller thumb pad with ribs on it. So shortly after my video, Rocker Gaming contacted me, and you may remember him because he did the Ultra 64 Jewel on my N64, and he wanted to create a hybridized version of the Ultra 64 controller, basically a replica that kind of combined the N64 and the Ultra 64 together. And I thought this was a great idea. I also thought it'd be something that you might be interested in as well. So. Before I review it, I'm gonna toss it over to him. He's gonna explain how he did this, and then it's gonna come back to me, and I'm gonna talk about all the different variations that he created. Hey, Tony, thanks for having me on. Now, Tony, whether you realize it or not, when you showed off Shane's Ultra 64 controller a while back, and you played Mario 64 with it, you made a lot of people jealous. Like, really jealous. So jealous, in fact, that you inspired many to take action and attempt to replicate it so they could have their own Ultra 64 experience. Now, very few people will go as far as I did to build this replica, but the controller in your hands came into my possession as an absolute beater whose joystick had literally been turned to dust. So it made it the prime candidate for an attempt to make an Ultra 64 replica. After a thorough restoration, a custom set of color matching buttons were cast, and a 3D model for the Ultra 64 stick was made by Mr. SG. Some modifications were made to Mr. SG's Ultra 64 model to make its steel stick compliant. From there, we came up with several different variations of the Ultra 64 stick top that can be swapped at will. The rubberized stick top turned out great, and those are the ones we're the most proud of. While this isn't a perfect replica, I really wanted you to give it a try, considering you're one of the very few people who has experience with the real Ultra 64 controller. Anyway, love to get your thoughts on it and keep up the great work over here, Tony. So Rocker Gaming sent this over to me and frankly, it looks really good, especially compared to what it looked like originally when he received it off of eBay. And I think he was being very generous with saying that the joystick mechanism was turning to dust. I think that was really just like plastic shavings, skin, hand oil, forming a weird cheese that was inside of it. I guess that's what dust kind of is, but regardless, it was disgusting, but this looks great. So here's the controller compared to the black N64 retail version. And I don't have the Ultra 64 controller with me, that's with Shane, but here it is in comparison to those two. He also mentioned a variety of pads. So some of this will boil down to your personal preference and how you like your joystick tops to feel, but here are a few notes on them before I get to reviewing them. So we have three resin tops. Think of it as a slightly grippy plastic. Even the smaller ones are bigger than the retail version. Then we have three rubberized tops. Same sizes, just rubber. Obviously being rubber, they're even stickier than the resin. And the stick itself is sort of an unofficial steel stick variant, uh, which is taller than the retail one, giving it more range of motion back and forth, up and down, etc. per the Ultra 64 stick being taller. The first up, we're gonna play Mario 64. And I'm only gonna feature a few games here, but they all control quite differently. So I still feel we will get a good range. So here is the largest resin top. And the first thing that becomes quite apparent is that I thought it was equal parts, the length of the stick and also the slipperiness that made the U64 controller less than ideal for platformers. But 
Now I think it's partially the range of motion, but mostly the slipperiness. Because the resin plastic has a touch of grip to it and, and it makes a world of difference. It feels like a U64 controller, but with actual control. I also like the rib variant and the non-ribbed. However, they do feel less like an Ultra 64 and more like an N64, but we're kind of splitting hairs because it's already a hybrid, and obviously, as you get smaller and smaller, you get more like retail. That said, I did notice a design flaw that I discussed with Rocker Gaming. As you play, you'll slowly loosen the screw that connects the top to the stick. You have to really initially tighten it down hard so this doesn't happen, but you kind of risk possibly breaking the top, which didn't happen with me, but what did happen was I had to tighten it down so hard that when I unscrewed it from the stick, it got stuck in the head. So uh, I had to kind of shove it on out with a good degree of force. Um, he mentions that he does have a solution for this in the future, basically just putting a rod down through the head into the stick, and that'll sort of solidify the connection between the two. So with that adjustment, I think that these will be very solid alternatives to retail. Moving on to the rubber ones, these also feel good. Uh, I think I like them just about as much or maybe a bit less than the resin ones. I actually thought I'd like them more than the resins, but they're just a touch too squishy for my taste. Uh, but your taste may differ. They also deviate further from the Ultra 64's hard plastic, but I guess I really shouldn't care at this point, because again, we're kind of splitting hairs. Of these, probably my favorite is the ribbed. It gives a bit of a squish, but it's not so large that the rubber starts bending in on itself. So like my original review, I wanted to play some games with flight. Games that have long, sweeping movements back and forth. I think the prototype stick, the actual Ultra 64 stick, really excelled here since you didn't need the shorter, jerkier motion that is more achievable with the retail version. And just like before, any of the heads here are a great fit for games with flight. So also, per my original video with the actual prototype, I'm going to dive a bit into Yoshi's Story. I actually got a lot of flack in that video for saying that Yoshi's Story should be D-pad compatible and should be played with a D-pad. A lot of people got unreasonably upset about that comment. So let me just reiterate what I meant. And what I meant was exactly what I said, that it should be just played with a D-pad and not a joystick. Sorry. That said, it's way more tolerable with Rocker's hybrid controller, just like the Mario 64 issue that I had with the prototype. It was, uh, you know, partially the long sweeping motions, but also the slipperiness of the prototype. And since it's not slippery here, it, it just feels a lot better. For comparison, here's me playing with the hybrid. Here's the Ultra 64. And here's retail. So the big question, does this feel like an Ultra 64 controller? Did Rocker Gaming capture the magic of the prototype? I'd say yes, pretty, I mean, as much as he possibly could. Obviously in my brain, I know that it's not an Ultra 64 prototype. It's a sort of a semi-hybrid replica, as we mentioned a thousand times. But the feeling is there, you know, as one of the very few people that actually like touched an Ultra 64 controller and joystick, it does feel similar. It does feel pretty much the same, but fixed. It feels like as if Nintendo kept the direction of what they were originally intending, but just fixed it and made it a bit grippier. So in that respect, I'd say it was a definite success. So. Rocker Gaming, thank you so much for taking the time to create all of these different variants and heads for me to mess around with. Really appreciate it. And I'd like all of you to check out his channel, especially the video where he talks about how he created this. It's very interesting. And aside from that, thank you all for watching, subscribing, joining us on Patreon, all that good stuff. And we'll see you all next time. Uh -huh.